Hi, this is Paul Farmer. Today I'm going to talk to you about supplier or vendor management. What's the difference? Same thing. Vendors are the people selling to you, so they're suppliers. It's the same list. So, what's the issues? Well, it depends, of course, on what type of suppliers and what sort of business you're running. So a wholesaler is going to have um, to consider wholesale distribution. Uh, other wholesalers they're buying from, manufacturers they're buying from. Whereas manufacturers need to consider a whole host of different types of suppliers. So they need to look at the API. They need to look at transport. They need to look at how the um, excipients are selected, what, they're, what are being used, making sure that the risk assessments have been done, making sure that the um, other considerations, so the potential chemical interactions, they need to make sure that they're in place with the correct um, certification, this correct source. Then of course they want to look at the actual manufacturing site, well maybe these days it's quite common for it to be somewhere else, not to be the actual uh, marketing authorization holder. So what do you want to look at at the manufacturer? Where well, you want to make sure that they've got their license. But you can't just rely on them having a license from their local authority. You want to know that they're actually doing the work the way that you need it done. So it's normal to go out and do an audit, focusing on what your expectations are, making sure it's clear that they understand when you want to be communicated with, when they've got to update you, how you're going to run your change control. But most of all, you want to gain confidence in their ability to actually do the supply. Most cases these days though, that you'll be relying on the manufacturer to verify the excipient supply, for example. Um, you'll be relying on them to get the artwork right, to confirm that they're actually using the master documents, the master batch manufacturing record that you've approved for them. is usually in their format. And all these things, they all take time. And there's plenty of opportunity for things to go wrong. So you need to look at what controls you've got in place, what agreements you've got with them, what confidence that you've got in their business, how often you go and see them for a case of oversight, um, making sure that they, uh, they understand what your definition of, is, of significant is. Maybe they've got a different idea. So you, it's best off giving examples when you want them to inform you of a change. So maybe you don't want to know about a layout change to the documents, but you do want to know if they actually change the mixing time. You don't want to know if the microcrystalline cellulose is coming from the local supplier or the one that's a bit further away in another state, for example. But if it impacts your product, you do. So how are they going to know whether to tell you or not? Well, Significant, you need to give them examples of what is significant. Um, if you do want to know about every single change, you're going to get so many that you probably won't be able to keep up. So you need to know the ones that are actually going to impact your quality. Then you've got them in control. You know what they're doing. You know what they're supplying. You're always going to have issues on delivery. You're going to have things that doesn't quite go to plan. Maybe a document wasn't there the way that you expected it to be when it arrived and you have to go and follow up and get it back. Maybe there was a delay en route. Maybe it left late. Maybe there's a delay in customs. And you want to make sure that you're tracking supplier performance. It's called the vendor management system by most companies now. And what you're really doing is you're looking at the key characteristics, the key performance indicators. Did they deliver the right stock? Did they deliver the right quantity? Did they deliver it on time? Did they notify you that you were going to get it on a certain day? Did they deliver it within the supply period based on your agreements that you've got with them? So maybe you place the order on a Monday and you're expecting to get it delivered the following Monday. Did they achieve that? Did they let you know if there was going to be any problems? Did they carry out contract review and ensure that you knew that something was going to be early or late? There's a whole host of different things. And then of course, when you go and audit, you want to verify that they've actually complied with the agreement. Make sure that they've done what you expected them to do. 
and more importantly, make sure that they're actually notifying you when you expect them to notify you. Because sometimes you'll find that they, the agreement is unclear. And because it's unclear, they don't tell you when they should tell you. But they're not sure, so they don't. It's always good to actually run through a new agreement in actual practice. So maybe they've been working, you've been working with them for a year, maybe two years, depending on your risk assessment for their supply. And you want to go and check that actually what they are doing is what you agreed they'd be doing. Make sure there's no misinterpretation of the requirements. Make sure they've actually integrated your requirements into their systems, because that's, that's where it can fall down. If you request and insist on a different requirement to everybody else that they supply for, well, they're doing a special for you. And if you do a special that's not part of the routine, that's when there's an increased risk of it going wrong. Maybe they're supposed to condition the cool packs in a different way. Maybe they've got to use some different um, shipping information. Maybe they've got to do it on a certain day and you don't want them to be arriving on the Friday, for example. As soon as you put special requirements that they don't incorporate into their system, then that's when you risk things going wrong. So I hope you found this useful. Good luck with your vendor management systems. I hope everything goes well for you. Thanks. That's Paul Palmer.